Rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof of anything other than that. Hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party. They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. Her name for New York. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the U.S. Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. So here's where the ball starts rolling in Diddy's saga. Of all the wildest rumors floating around, one of the most shocking is that Diddy has been running some sort of Epstein-style operation. Yes, you heard that right. The whispers suggest that Diddy has been hosting parties where all kinds of questionable things happen, and get this, he's allegedly been filming everything. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yeah! you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. Oh, I, I did. Now, is there any actual proof? Well, we're about to discuss that. Uh, those celebrity environments where celebrities all get together, and there's so many of them, you know, and these wild parties. And if you got a wild party and P. Diddy puts on that wild party and, you know, he sets everybody up. Like, if you were an intelligence agent, you know, like a Jeffrey Epstein type deal, that'd be the way to do it. <laughs> Big old crazy party, get everybody loose. Who's to say what's real when it comes to the secret lives of the rich and famous, right? Get them the yayo. And everything else. Get them little, everything you need. Get fired up. Get those cameras rolling. And now you got everybody under wraps. What a twisted web some folks weave. Joe Rogan, the godfather of podcasting, even contributed his two cents to the Diddy drama. Who fucking knows? Who knows what's real? That's what Diddy's lawyers, I think, said. It was like, yeah, these are just trumped up charges. Not trumped up. I don't think they said that, but like, like bullshit charges. Dude, when Homeland Security invades your house. You got problems. With dudes with guns and body armor. There's... Forget Someone said that they weren't there to take stuff, they were there to delete everything. Like the real people that were in there, you know. Oh, like that's funny. With Epstein. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Of course. There's layers upon layers. <laughs> when you get into these fucking conspiracy theories, man, they, they never end. In a recent episode, Rogan touched on the controversies surrounding Diddy's infamous parties, which have been described as everything from dark to scandalous. Conspiracy theorists love digging into this type of thing. Secret celebrity cults, scandalous footage, and a lot of hush-hush activities. It's fun to talk about. It is fun to talk about. It's hard to know what's true, but yeah. what? But let's be real for a second. If you were the CIA and you were looking for people who've experienced bizarre, life-altering situations, wouldn't Diddy's guest list be like a treasure trove? Maybe that's why these parties keep cropping up in every whispered conspiracy. Like, you got a wild party. <laughs> what, what, if what's happening is too fucked up for, for Luke from Two Live Crew? Uh, check, please. Now, if the rumors about Diddy weren't already strange enough, let's talk about Puffy's Flavor Camp. Yeah, you read that right. Flavor Camp. This wasn't some cute little summer retreat. No. I'm not doing that. We're not involved in them. I'm I was involved. never at Diddy's party. I don't even know them. We're out here. I don't want to nobody. Tell them jokes. Nobody. 
Telling jokes. Like I told you. Having fun. That's it. Yeah. Smoking dope, cracking jokes, making people... That's Everything it. Everything else is background music. This was reportedly where Diddy groomed his inner circle of protégés. One of the most infamous names linked to this camp? None other than Usher. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like non-stop. Back in the day, Usher lived with Diddy for a year when he was still a kid. Later, during an interview on The Howard Stern Show, Usher vaguely mentioned some things that went down while staying at Diddy's place, making it clear he would never send his own kids there. The place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. That alone raises eyebrows. But Usher has never fully spoken out against Diddy, which only fuels more speculation. Is he scared? Or does he simply not want to bite the hand that fed him early in his career? You know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and... say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't... <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh-huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh-huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim. Craig Mack. Usher isn't the only one with ties to Diddy. Justin Bieber, another former Flavor Camp attendee, has connections to Diddy that are also raising suspicions. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you rock this every time you come to LA. Yeah, this will be yours. So, every oh, time you come okay. to LA, it's a little dusty, but you know, I'm going to come get the front shot at this. Man. Man, I'm in it. Multiple clips of Bieber hanging out with Diddy from the past have resurfaced, with many pointing out how young and impressionable Bieber was during his early Hollywood years. Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours. This has led to even more people questioning what was going on behind the scenes. Usher is a procurer. And if Usher knew what was going to happen, to any of those young children that he took to the Flavor Freak Off, is he a good guy? Especially considering what happened to him, especially considering that he sat with Howard Stern and Howard Stern said, would you send your kids to Puffy's Flavor Camp? And his immediate response was, hell no! So it's good enough for everybody else's kids, but it's not good enough for yours. Speaking of Hollywood A-listers, let's not forget the list of celebs spotted at Diddy's infamous parties. We're talking about the biggest names in the business. Jay-Z, Beyonce, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian, and even Ashton Kutcher. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. It's like a who's who of Hollywood's elite, all supposedly mingling at events where, according to rumors, anything could have happened. You feel what I'm saying? Like people look at Usher, they don't see that. They're not seeing the victim. They're not seeing that boy that got rushed to the hospital. But just because you attended a Diddy party doesn't mean you were involved in any shady dealings, right? Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what kind, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. Life. 
One insider clarified that not every partygoer was getting sprayed down with Vaseline and baby oil, but simply being in that environment has now made people incredibly nervous as these allegations come to light. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. When it comes to Hollywood, where there's smoke, there's usually fire, and the rumor mill is definitely churning. He took Justin Bieber there. Diddy had been trying to get to Bieber for a minute, and his management was backing him off. But it wasn't until Usher took over management and had guardianship and gave temporary guardianship to the diddler for 48 hours. Think about that. He had already been to the hospital. That situation that Gene was talking about. Mm. And you still took Bieber there. Speaking of nervous, let's circle back to Usher. Recently, Usher deleted all of his tweets. Because I think if a, a victim comes out against Usher, it'll show how egregious this shit is. Because if he can be a predator, then anybody can be a predator. Can't smile on your face the whole time. You feel what I'm saying? Like people look at Usher, they don't see that. They are not seeing the victim. They are not seeing that boy that got rushed to the hospital. They not, they not, they not, they not seeing what the intentions was in his heart. That's a pretty bold move for someone with nothing to hide, right? He quickly followed it up with a post claiming his account had been hacked, complete with crying emojis. But does anyone really believe that? Yeah, and that it's time to just, you know, learn Somebody's... how to live without it. He been on Diddy's a long time. It's time for him to learn how to make this thing happen without the devil's in his mouth or ass. The timing couldn't be more suspicious. And with so many questioning Usher's silence on his time with Diddy, this Twitter purge has only stoked more fires of suspicion. I'm tired of Usher. I wish somebody would come out and just like sue him. Like, we need <laughs> Usher. <laughs> no, we do. We need a victim to come out and be honest about him. Because what I'm realizing is, is that he's gonna fake the funk into the victim. And just when you think things couldn't get any stranger, we get hit with one of the weirdest details yet. During a raid on one of Diddy's properties, authorities reportedly found over 1,000 bottles of baby oil. Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters, and the victim-making machine kept going on. Jay-Z has been notable by his silence since uh, these charges were brought against Diddy. Why do you think that is? Yeah, you heard that right. Baby oil, even for someone with Diddy's reputation, that's next level bizarre. As disgraced music mogul Sean Diddy Combs was famous for holding his annual 4th of July party in the Hamptons. All of the well-known partygoers wore white, and it wasn't exactly a family-friendly event. Now imagine you're a six-year-old kid and you find yourself a guest there. Allison Hall has more. Comedian and podcaster Andrew Schultz had a field day with this one, who wouldn't? The visual alone is absurd. What on earth would anyone need that much baby oil for? But in the world of conspiracy theories, it's exactly this kind of odd detail that keeps the rumor mill going. It's like peeling back layers of an onion. Just when you think you've hit the core, there's another layer of crazy waiting beneath. Six-year-old boy was once a guest at Diddy's infamous white party. The disgraced mogul has his arm draped around a young Justin Levtosky back in 1999. Justin is now 31 and tells Inside Edition about taking that photo. He put his arm around me in an uncomfortable way, close to... Um, areas that you shouldn't as a as a grown man let's shift gears and talk about stevie j one of diddy's longtime friends and collaborators stevie recently went live on tmz to defend diddy amidst all the allegations a good guy it's horrible. It's horrible. does that sound like a good guy now that we know what diddy's really like what kind of asshole do you gotta be to take another boy another talented boy and put him in your place so it ain't gotta be you no more. 
because that's what pedophiles do. They get victims, and then once they get to a certain age and they get too old for them to enjoy them, they send them out to go get other young kids. But here's where things get juicy. Stevie also posted footage from Diddy's 50th birthday party, which had a guest list that reads like a who's who of the entertainment world, including Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye West, and Kevin Hart. He saw at the party. So I remember marijuana um, and topless women. That's the two main things that I remember. So how'd he end up there? Well, his father, David Allen, was Diddy's photographer, snapping pictures of partygoers in the Hamptons. Justin's mom, Maya, was also there. She says the party was family friendly at first, but then turned raunchy. Here's where things take a darker turn. Rumor has it that Diddy holds compromising footage of his party guests and has been using it as leverage. Girls swimming topless, young looking girls that were, you know, not dressed. We moved to another part of the house so that he wouldn't be exposed. Um, to what was going on. In later years, Diddy implemented a curfew for children. The kids have like an hour left. So get extra comfortable, but this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't want to come to. I think he's a monster. Some speculate that this is why some of Hollywood's biggest names have remained silent, even as the allegations against Diddy pile up. You got a Jay-Z victim and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened. And yet, they had to sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. Mm. Then there's the Jay-Z connection. Some sources allege that Jay-Z isn't much different from Diddy when it comes to behind-the-scenes behavior. So why does, why does Puffy, why does it all come to a head now? Why, did, why now? Why? Because he's the acceptable monster at this time like R. Kelly was the last time I sat on this couch. Oh. So who's next? Y'all don't see the lineup? Oh, yeah, no. we yeah, see we it. see the lineup. We I'm just waiting to see who's next. Who's like Jay-Z is setting Diddy up. Jaguar Wright, a musician known for spilling tea on industry insiders, has repeatedly claimed that Jay-Z's public persona is just a front. Why is everyone having such a hard time? He ain't doing sh different. He lined up D Haven, stole his life and identity. He lined up Big L, stole his life and identity. He lined up Dame Dash, stole his life, identity, and took his love. With Diddy's empire potentially crumbling, some are wondering if Jay-Z might be next in line for public scrutiny. Could these two music moguls be hiding similar secrets? Let's just say allegedly that happened. Now I want you to think about 106th and Park with Mary J. Blige. Free, who is a victim of Sean Carter. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, who is a victim of Sean Combs are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah. And just when you thought this script couldn't get any more bizarre, enter Ellen DeGeneres. Yes, the same Ellen who danced her way into America's heart with her feel-good daytime talk show. Wait, so tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up to No, well, there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's that? <laughs> According to some pretty wild allegations, Ellen was caught on tape at one of Diddy's parties. And it wasn't just any tape. Federal authorities allegedly found footage of Ellen involved in criminal behavior. Now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's also a strange furniture selling conspiracy tied to her name. Allegedly, Ellen was selling overpriced furniture online 
and the names of the items coincided with missing children in the area. 9.30 to like maybe 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then it will carry on there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it... Mm -hmm. No, I mean, um, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, <laughs> I'll listen to the music. Um, the theory suggests the furniture listings were actually a front for something far darker, human trafficking. Again, these are just rumours, but the fact that they've gained any traction shows how outlandish this whole Diddy saga has become. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak-offs and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. And, of course, we can't talk about Hollywood scandals without mentioning the Kardashians. Some sources claim Kim Kardashian has also been linked to shady events at Diddy's parties. Some even allege she mistreated other celebrities, including Justin Bieber. Puffy was involved, and Suge Knight was involved. Of, I think Suge Knight's the one who said the thing I just thought of. What thing? <clears throat> About that they were there to delete stuff. <laughs> well, if he really was filming everybody, I mean, he had a lot of people at those parties, right? You know who said <laughs> Luke? From Two Live Crew? Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah. Or something, right? <laughs> so what's really going on with Diddy? Are these just rumours spun out of control, or is there something darker lurking beneath the surface? Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. Only time will tell, but one thing is certain. The entertainment world loves a good scandal, and this one has all the makings of a Hollywood thriller.